Hi, welcome back to this unhinged channel that just does whatever. I'm your host, Ryan Mulder and Shane Scully. It's paranormal investigation time, folks. I came across a TikTok. That should be the new name of this channel. I came across a TikTok claiming there's a street in Liverpool where people experience time slips. Time slips seem to be where you time travel, but without wanting to, just slipping into another time. Whoa. So today we're going to take a look at those accounts and get goofy. That's what we do here. After I saw the TikTok, I did think, maybe this is just made up. After all, everything is. But since several websites have reported the same stories, I figured the TikToker probably didn't make them up. I know that several websites could just have the same source, a desire to clickbait, a slow news day, but let's humour it. Embrace the absurd. The first story takes place in 1996. It's a strange feeling when a year from your own life is considered a spooky pastime. Am I a ghost? Frank and his wife were out for a stroll in Liverpool city centre. His wife decided that she wanted to go and buy a book from Waterstones. Was Waterstones around in 1996? I feel like it's not that old. Established in 1982. Well, the first tool in my investigation belt hasn't debunked the story yet. Waterstones is real. You heard it here first. As they approached Bold Street, Frank decided he wanted to go to another shop first. However, he bumped into a friend and stopped to talk to him. And the wife decided to just go to Waterstones on her own. She was very keen to get into that bookshop. Like, they weren't in a hurry. They were just out a walk and decided to pop into some shops. What does she know? A few moments later, Frank said goodbye to his friend, popped into the shop he wanted to go to, and then headed to meet his wife. I cannot stress to you how risky these activities would be in the 90s. Like, no one had mobile phones yet. He had no way of telling his wife where he was, how long he was going to be, where he was going to meet her. This couple is wild. So he headed to Bold Street and walked towards the bookstore, but as he got there, he looked up and was surprised to see the name Crips above the door. I would also be surprised to see the name Crips above a store entrance. What the hell does Crips mean? What do they sell? It sounds morbid. As he was about to cross the road, apparently a van crossed past him with the name Cardins on the side. And this is actually how the next sentence is written. The van honked his old fashioned horn and drove past. His old fashioned horn. The van is like an autonomous vehicle, like in cars or Thomas the Tank Engine. Card in the van. <laughs> Looking around, Frank apparently realized that things were not as they should be. He looked at the cars driving past and realized they were all old fashioned vehicles, such as people would drive back in the 50s and 60s. I mean, Liverpool's pretty proud of its heritage. What if it was just a Beatles convention that day? Then he noticed the people. Men were wearing hats and max, and the women were dressed in headscarves, full skirts, because women be wearing half skirts in the 90s, and had old fashioned hairstyles such as women would wear after the war. At this point, Frank was beginning to feel slightly freaked out and continued to cross the road and head towards the store. As he got closer, he noticed in the window there were handbags, shoes, and umbrellas. Not what I thought a place like Crips would be selling. I figured you'd be buying a headstone from Crips. Suddenly he saw a young woman looking up at the shop sign and she looked confused. She was wearing modern clothes and she saw him approaching and she smiled at him. Frank, did you flirt with a girl on the street and your wife caught you and you made up this elaborate story about time slips to get out of it? Frank went into the shop, closely followed by the young woman. When they entered, he was surprised and pleased to see that it had turned back into a bookshop. Real pleased. The young woman smiled, shook her head and said, that was strange. I thought it was a new clothes shop. That's why I was taking off my clothes, haha. -ha. And then she walked away looking extremely puzzled. This may seem like an unlikely tale, but the odd thing about it is that Frank is in fact an ex-police officer and is used to dealing in facts. This has not aged well. So the parts of Frank's story that I believe I think he went to town that day. I looked into whether or not there was a store called Crips and according to the Liverpool Echo, which is a local newspaper, there was a store called Crips that was there until the 70s. We don't know what age Frank is, although with a name like Frank, probably pretty old. He might have remembered the store name from his youth. The article also said that Bold Street was a luxury shopping street, which is very interesting because hats and Macs. 
That is such an American 50s fashion sense. I've seen photographs of Britain in the 50s and 60s, not as fashionable as America. But until the 60s, Liverpool was the main way for you to cross the Atlantic between the US and the UK, so maybe there was a lot of people cutting about in hats and mechs. I think if Frank is lying, he's at least done his research, and for that, I give him a Casio out of 10. The second story concerns a young girl by the name of Imogen. She decided to go to Liverpool to buy her sister a few things for her new baby. Upon arriving, she was happy to see a new mother care store had opened up on the corner of Lord Street and Whitechapel. Well, this dates the story because I think mother care went out of business a while back. 2020, so not that long ago, but still. She wandered around the store and picked up a few baby items. She was surprised to see how cheap they were, but she thought that because the store was newly opened that there must have been an offer. Taking the items to the counter, she tried to pay with her credit card. The staff member looked at her suspiciously and went off to get the manager. When she came back, she looked at the card and told Imogen that they don't take cards. Disappointed, Imogen went and put the items back because she didn't have any money with her. To me, it seems like she could have asked them to wait and hold the items for her while she went and got money, but okay. When she got home, she told her mother what happened. Her mother was surprised and really puzzled. Aren't we all? That store closed years ago. There's a bank there now. Oh, the irony. Not believing her, Imogen took her mother back to the same place the next day. Sure enough, the store wasn't there. It was a bank. So I looked it up and Mother Care was established in 1961. And although credit cards were taking off in the US at that time, they weren't really a common form of payment until the early 21st century. So this adds up. I also found that there was a Mother Care on that street that became a bank, but I don't know what time period that transition took place in. I think there's a vagueness to Imogen's story. If she made it up, she didn't do a lot of research. So I'm going to give her a free McDonald's watch out of 10. The third story is of a young man named Sean, who whilst out shoplifting, yes, way to incriminate yourself, Sean. While shoplifting in Liverpool in 2006, Sean was running away from a security guard and ran down Hanover Street. Trying to shake off the guard, Sean ran down an alley called Brooks Alley, but unfortunately, it was a dead end. By this time, <laughs> he was out of breath and started to get a tight sensation in his chest. And he soon realised that it actually wasn't a problem with him, but everything around him. Typical thieves, blaming others. He waited for the guard to come around the corner after him, but he never appeared. So thinking he had given him the slip, there are more words out there than time and slip. He sauntered back out and started to walk down Hanover Street again, but he soon realised that something was wrong. The road looked different and so did the pavement. He noticed cars driving by that looked very old fashioned and the roadworks that he knew were there were now gone. Interesting observations from someone who's used to running away from authorities. What obstacles are now out of my way? Soon he saw that the people around him were wearing strange clothes. Hats and Max? Crossing over to Bold Street, he noticed that there were traffic lights where there weren't before, and bushes growing around the Lyceum, near a bar that he recognised. Then he began to panic. He realised somehow he had stepped back in time, and the time slip was not going away. Then he remembered his cell phone. You can't say cell phone in one sentence and pavement in another. Pick an English. Taking it out of his pocket, he tried to get a signal, but of course, it didn't work. Eventually, he began to really panic, but soon spotted a kiosk selling newspapers and headed over. What's a newspaper gonna do to resolve the situation? Was the panic from not knowing what year it was? Leaning over the stand, he took a look at the front page of the Daily Post. There, in bold lettering, was the date, 18th of May, 1967. He wondered what to do. What happens if he can't get back to his own time? What about family and friends? Who's gonna steal for them now? He was willing to risk prison, but not time travel. Think of the children. So speeding up his pace, he reached H. Samuel the jewelers and tried his phone once again. This time it worked. Sighing with relief, he looked around and realized that he'd returned to the present. But the strange thing was, he could still see down the end of the road, people still walking around in 1967. And he didn't wanna join them. Hmm. By this time, Sean had seen enough and dived onto a bus to go home. 
When he was interviewed by the local newspaper later, he stated over four times the exact account. Yes, I was robbing this store and then I time travelled. Yeah, I'll tell you that another time. Get this down. I was robbing a store? Apparently, the security guard was also interviewed and confirmed that Sean disappeared down the alleyway. And I mean, I just don't even know what the conversation was after that point where the security guard was kind of like, Oh, so you found him? You know where he lives? Okay, is he still there? <laughs> Like, I feel like the original problem has not been solved. So, there is a Brooks Alley in Liverpool near Bold Street. However, it is not currently a dead end. Maybe it was in 2006, but the evidence is not in your favour, Sean. Interestingly, all three stories mentioned high street shops. I mean, I know those are things that you find in city centres, but it does make me wonder if high street stores have started inventing time slip stories in order to get people to come and visit. It's a long shot, isn't it? I feel like Sean panicked the most out of everyone in these stories, and yet he was the only one who had access to the past and present and the choice whether to go down and hang out in the past or stay in the present. And he chose to stay in the present, which strikes me as odd, because Sean is a risk taker. He robs shops. You think he wouldn't want to walk around in the 60s? I'm giving Sean a sundial out of 10. So my final thoughts on time travel are that time is not linear. We made that up. And it's particularly hard for me to let go of that because I have synesthesia and I have mapped out time in my head. But all we know is that the Earth circles around the sun and it gives us days and it gives us seasons within a year and we age. The idea that there's a forward and backwards in time is just a construct that we invented in order to manage our own understanding of our lives. I don't think that you can travel forward and backward in time in that sense because all time exists at the same time. I hope that clears things up. What do you think? Do time slips exist? Have you slipped through time? Have you ever watched the time episode of Don't Hug Me I'm Scared? It is amazing. Anyway, I'll see you next time.